Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn about a new look development tool which allows you to create depth of field blurring in a variety of compositing scenarios. This tool is known as Physical Blur and it is a continuation of the convolution shaders such as Convolve, Physical Bokeh and Physical Glare. So whether you're working on a 3D composite in action, performing post operations on CG render passes or even look development with Flame's finishing tools, Physical Blur allows you to create realistic depth of field blurring with lots of flexibility. We'll be covering some of the most common scenarios over the coming videos. You can follow along with this video by downloading the media and setups. As always, the link is available in the YouTube description or use the link displayed on screen. Now after loading the media and batch setup, select this action node and load up its controls with the 2 up view. I suggest using the action schematic in this case so that you can see how all the objects relate to each other in the 3D composite. So here you have 3 bouquets of balloons which are all at different distances in 3D space. If you look at the perspective view, you'll also note that the background is a curved 3D object. All the 3D objects have been textured with PBR materials and lit with a combination of an IPL and light sources. So in this scenario, you would like to add depth of field blurring to this composite and use the depth information of the 3D environment to drive this effect. The first step is to locate and select the camera in the action schematic. Call up the context menu and add physical to focus. Since physical to focus is a matchbox shader, it behaves the same as all the others and can be applied to the camera, surfaces and selectives depending on what you want to achieve. Since you want the result of the camera to have depth of field blurring, physical to focus is added to the camera. Now you should have noticed that the result output has already started to show the effect. If you look at the physical to focus tools, the initial default settings make it really easy to use. For example, to pick a focus point, enable the icon and position it over any object in the 3D scene. With the focus distance set to pixel depth, Flame reads the data from the Z-depth channel generated by action and determines the focal plane. If you want to see the Z-depth channel, you can toggle the viewing to depth and expose the 3D data. More on this at a later time. If you return to the result of physical to focus, you can also control how the depth of field affects the blurring. For example, the near and far to focus controls the amount of blur outside the chosen focus point. You can also adjust the focus range, which is used to create a very narrow or very wide depth of field appearance. Finally, you can control how quickly you go from focus to blur using the near min and far max settings. In fact, the near min and far max values are actually linked to the camera's far and near settings. In other words, if you look at the camera menu, the camera defines the depth in the 3D scene. The default far value is at 10,000 which defines the depth range for the 3D scene. This is fine when objects are spread out within the 3D composite. But if the objects are quite close together and your depth range is actually very narrow, you may find yourself putting in very high values just to adjust the far max setting in physical to focus. This is not ideal, so by shortening the camera's 3D depth by decreasing the far value should give you better control when adjusting the near min and far max values of physical to focus. I found this example works well with a far value of 6000. That's a handy bit of extra knowledge, but coming back to physical to focus, it's as easy as picking your focus point and adjusting your depth of field settings to achieve good looking results quite fast. However, if you're not satisfied with the look, there are quite a few refinements you could make. For example, 
the depth of field blurring is created by taking the Z depth information and cutting into slices. You can see this if you toggle to view the slices. Each slice uses a different blur value and then is blended together to create the depth of field blurring. If you switch to the slicing menu, you can see the default number of slices, but you could increase this for a finer result. If you look again at the result view and adjust the slices once more, you can see how this affects the depth of field blurring. There are a few other options that we'll touch on at a later point, but there is another way to interpret the defocus aside from looking at the slices or the final result. Switching back to the focus menu, you can set the viewing to defocus. Physical defocus is now interpreted as a jet map and you can see how the blur values are now represented as continuous variations of colour. This is an alternative to seeing the blur or even the slices. Green is the in focus range, red is the far plane and blue is the near plane. So if you were to reduce the far max value, more red will be introduced into the distance of the image. And if you were to change the focal point, you'll note how the jet map will adjust to represent how different areas will be affected by physical defocus. So hopefully you'll find this handy when analysing your depth of field blurring. Now one other aspect of this effect is the look of the bokeh. The bokeh is a natural side effect of defocusing and generally contributes to the look and style of the image. So looking at the bokeh closer to the camera, you can see the two bokeh instances on the balloons. Now you have total control over the look of the bokeh, which is pretty much the same as the physical glare shader. For example, you can switch to the highlights menu and increase the gain to push the bokeh effect. This gain is driven by the intensity of the blur. The higher the blur value, the brighter the corresponding bokeh. And as expected, the gain will not do anything at the focus point where the blur value is zero. Secondly, the default bokeh is procedurally generated, so if you switch to the bokeh menu, you have plenty controls to experiment with. You can set the number of blades, decide whether they are curved or not, and even make them anamorphic if your footage requires it. In terms of distortions, you can adjust various aspects of the aberration which includes a variety of lens noise choices. Each one will produce a different result which can be used creatively or even match real world glass. One final aspect I will demonstrate in a future video is that you also have the ability to input your own kernel to accurately match a physical lens if you have been supplied with a bokeh element from that specific lens. So this is a great new way of adding depth of field blurring to your 3D composites. This certainly replaces the old depth of field blurring in action and has plenty more uses which you'll see in upcoming videos. Two final points worth mentioning is that firstly, since physical to focus is a GLSL shader, it renders pretty fast over the GPU. However, if your system is struggling with not enough GPU memory or perhaps the resolution is too large for the GPU, you can switch to the rendering menu and enable CPU rendering which should be able to take on the workload. Secondly, depth of field blurring is very reliant on the precision of your 3D depth. So ensure that you set the action output precision to use 32-bit graphics for the best results. In future videos, I'll expand on Physical Defocus's additional functionality, as well as other types of scenarios such as compositing with CG render passes, working in the timeline and even incorporating machine learning into the workflow. Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to Flame 2021. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos and thanks for watching.